Hey, what's up you guys? Nick Quintero here. And today I'm going to be doing the first episode of a new series that I want to record called How Would You Do It? Or something like that. I don't know if that's what I want to call it yet. Basically, I noticed a lot of people on like the Photoshop subs for Reddit and Facebook groups and things like that who have like an image of a graphic or a t-shirt that they really like and they want to kind of emulate the style and maybe like flip it and you know make make a graphic that looks similar to it for their t-shirts with their brand but they don't necessarily know how to execute the style so they're always asking like how would you do this so at the last job that i had designing t-shirts a big part of it was taking like um a brand or a style or a trend and kind of reinventing it into the licenses that we would make graphics for. Like a lot of times we would find like a cool Nike running shirt or something and have to make a Batman graphic out of that. I use Batman as a reference on this channel a lot. I feel like I got pretty good at taking a style or an image that already exists and kind of figuring out how it was made or at least figuring out how to emulate it close enough that it would make sense with uh, new images and new graphics, specifically for licenses or brands. I think this is a really cool opportunity to have a discussion with you guys about what you wanna see done. I think it's really cool because this can be interesting at any level, even if you already know how you would do it. I think it's kind of cool to see how someone else would do it. And I think this is kind of a cool video thing that I would wanna see other people do. So I hope you guys really like it and like the idea behind it. I'm gonna start this first video with an image that somebody posted on Reddit and they were trying to figure out exactly how somebody would recreate this style. But I'm hoping that after this video, you guys will have some images that you want to send to me so that I can show you how I would do the things that you're trying to figure out or you're just interested in seeing my process and how I would do it. All right, so this is the image that the person posted on Reddit. And I'm pretty sure this is like a t-shirt from Hereditary. This does not look like an official t-shirt at all. It's kind of crazy. But the question that they had originally was how to get this like cool posterize effect and doing these things in different colors. I answered them on Reddit with like a quick brief response, but I don't think it was good enough to really explain how to achieve this look with your own elements. So this is what I'm gonna be recreating here today. Now I've got a few things set up already, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy this into my new file so I can keep it up here in the corner for reference. This is basically just two different photos kind of superimposed on each other. So I'm gonna do a similar thing to keep the style of what I'm doing very close to this original. So I'm just gonna go into pexels.com and I already pulled a couple of images. I just did a quick search for uh, Scream and Scary and found a couple things. I know they aren't exact, but this is what we would have to do at my previous job. So I think it's worth using these to explore how to recreate this with your own photos. All right, let's go ahead and download these. I was originally copying those, but I don't think that was a good idea. All right, so let's get these files open in Photoshop. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and layer these up a little bit close to the reference so we can see how they will apply together make this one transparent so that when I put this one in the back, we can really see where this creepy girl will line up. All right, so let's do the girl in the back first. Now, if we look at this original photo, it's kind of got mostly black where the shadows and things are, and then just the one color white. And then a couple of outlines, they look like they've been drawn in just to really keep the shape of the person. So. I'm gonna try something similar to that. Might not be necessary 
to make these lines here where the image is lighter but definitely in these dark spots like this dress where it's going to lose all shape and recognizable form you want to create some outlines here So this week I had to buy a new Wacom tablet for drawing in Photoshop and Illustrator and I am not used to it at all. So this feels super uncomfortable and it's probably the wrong week to try to do a tutorial while I'm still getting over the learning curve of this Wacom tablet. If you haven't used a Wacom tablet before, I highly recommend it because it's super helpful whenever you're drawing things and getting these lines. Uh, mine are pretty wonky right now, but this is a very posterized image, so I don't think it's going to matter in the end. Plus, this is just going to be a quick video. I'm not trying to get all super detailed here. Oh my god, I keep accidentally drawing where I don't want to because I don't know. I'm not familiar with all the pressure and everything on this keyboard or on this Wacom I mean ugh. okay let's get this shape around her head Jesus what the hell is going on this shouldn't be happening at all because it's just the space bar from my computer okay as you can see don't really care about how accurate or close I'm getting to these lines, but there's a really quick, simple outline of this creepy girl. All right, I guess I should probably go ahead and start cutting her out. Before I quit my job, I was working at a place that had a Cintiq and those are awesome because you can use them to draw directly on the screen of that tablet. And then you don't really have to guess and use your uh, unbalanced coordination like I have to figure out where this is actually landing on your canvas. But those things cost like two grand, so not buying one myself yet. This is also a wireless Bluetooth Wacom, so it's pretty rad. There's no extra cables or cords, and I'm just using this over to the side. I feel like if you use a Wacom tablet in front of your computer, you're a psychopath. So it really doesn't matter how much or like how close I get to these things because once I start doing the posterized effects and things, it's just gonna mess with the whole image. All right. So now here's my creepy black and white girl. And my outlines, let's turn that off and let's make my background black. Cool, so that is somewhat close to that, but there's definitely more of an effect on it. So I'm gonna try a couple things here. Try to achieve this with the levels first. And control how much black and white I get in there before they meet. You can see the closer that these sliders get, the more posterized it becomes. That's pretty cool, but you can see the problem where this face has some details, the hair doesn't have much details, and the skull of this animal lost all the details. So this is the important part, and I think this is the comment that I left to the person who originally asked about this, which is to cut these things apart before you do the posterization. So that way you can control how much 
it actually applies to each one of these parts since the contrast is so much different. And I think that that is really the most important thing that you have to do here. So I'm going to cut out the skull and I'm going to cut out, let's see, the face here along with the neck. And again, you don't have to be very precise because there's so much black around it. And then I'm going to cut out the hair to try to get as much detail on that as possible. And I'm going to label these layers so that this doesn't end up a mistake later. Okay, so now I'm gonna do those levels again on each individual piece. There's not much detail in this skull to begin with. So there's not gonna be a lot here at the end, but it's better than it was before when it was like basically nothing. All right, so this one on the hair, I'm gonna bump up the white a lot before I start bringing in this black to make sure I get as much of it as possible because there's not much to work with there in the first place. Kind of like my hair. All right, now I'll do this little creep girl in the background. Hands and stuff. I have to bump this white up a lot. Using probably could have cut this further and done like the arms versus the hands. But you know, I think it's fine like that. Cool. So that is absolutely how I would do that little girl in the background. That is the little girl, right? They got her head cut off. Oh, spoilers. Sorry. All right, cool. So now let's group all of the little creep. And now we can get started on the girl in the front. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and this one black and white and play with some levels first. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, let's try this new feature in Photoshop. I've used it before, but I want to see if it'll work here. Let's go to the magic wand and select subject and see how much of this girl it gets. That's pretty good, especially if we're going to posterize this. It don't it doesn't really matter that it missed some of these little pieces of hair and things down there. So cool, a lot less cutting and work on that for me. Okay, so let's make that black and white and let's bump up some of this black level here. And now from this one, I'll go ahead and start cutting things up again. And since we're using the selection tool, let's try using the quick selection tool to get some of this face here apart from the hair. Might as well use the tools that they've given us, right? Cool, that's pretty good. And now let's try another one on the hair. I'm loving this. It's so good because you don't have to be exact and this is not exact, but it's good enough as my dad would say. Got a little too excited and went too fast. Well, son of a bitch. Okay, so that's not grabbing that anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go onto this quick selection tool. And just grab that and I can go all the way off onto the sides because there's nothing there. And duplicate that part of it, perfect. Okay, and now I don't think I need to worry about separating well, okay, maybe I do because 
On this reference, her skin is this red color and her clothes are the white color. So maybe for this girl, I will need to separate my selection. So let's... Making me look bad, selection tool. This one is interesting because I might need to get closer since it is like the clothes. But it's also something that means nothing. So I don't think it matters that much. I'm going to go ahead and leave this selection like that for the shirt. Perfect. Let's posterize this face. Actually, so you can see there's a lot more detail in the face in the front on this shirt than the one in the back. So maybe I should do this a different way. So maybe we can use the posterize tools that they have here. And just stick to two levels. All right, so Photoshop crashed. So that's today's lesson. Always save everything. I got lucky and it recovered some of the file, but I had to do my selections on the girl's face again. So I decided I am not going to use the threshold and I'm just gonna stick with the levels like I did on the first one, but I'm just gonna try to keep some more detail as I go. And I'm gonna save after every step. I have some weird extra highlights and things up here on the side, which I could clean up. Uh, maybe I'll go do that at the end if I really want to. Saving. 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 All right, so that's pretty much it. I mean, we're basically there. I think all I need to do is add some color here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eye drop these. And I think maybe I'll duplicate that layer and fill it with that color and set it to multiply. A Little rough, maybe not exactly what I want it to be like, but pretty close right now. I mean, I guess there's just a little bit of fine tuning and things that need to be done here. Cutting out that and maybe you could possibly even just continue to draw on this layer with that color to fill in some of these details here. I'm not sure how far I want to go with this for this design, but if this is something that you're making, you know, your own shirts for doing your band tees or whatever. Maybe you want to put in a little bit more effort. And you know what? There's a skin layer down here. So you probably want to make that. Whoa, why did that disappear? So let's see, set that to multiply. Now I've got her little shoulders and things all on that same skin color here. All right, let's eye drop this hair color. Duplicate the hair layer, fill in those pixels, set it to multiply. And that's pretty much it. I mean, like I said, I could go in here and clean this up if I wanted to. Maybe group those and put a mask on it to there. But then, you know, you can just come in here and clean this up. Just let it have whatever kind of shape that you want it to have. It can be rough, it can be clean. Perfect. It's really up to you. I think that that is pretty damn close and I'm happy with that. So this would be a really great style if you were making like a bootleg t-shirt or just any kind of like band merch. I think this posterized look really, really works. And of course you can do it in whatever colors you want. I think that this came out really great and really close to the reference. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let me know in the comments if you think that this 
looks like the reference or if it's too far off or if I missed something specific that I should have done to make it look more like the reference. If there's another way that you would do it, uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see more of these videos, please feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram, at Nick Q. Send me whatever kind of reference or whatever design that you wanna see how I would remake it. And I'll be making some more of these videos. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And click the little bell so that way you can be notified the next time I put up one of these videos. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'll catch you on the next one.